hi everybody it's Julie um, I wanted to make a video today a channeling video um, they always kind of require introductions um, I really wanted to use a filter because I look like shit <laughs> um, but I can't seem to do that with my video um, anyway um, I'm just trying to have a little bit of a sense of humor because um, today I am not particularly feeling um, optimistic about this whole virus situation in terms of everything going back to normal. Um, I don't want to say that that's like a naive perspective. I'd like to think it's a little bit more of a hopeful perspective, but um, I don't know. There's always a million different ways to look at something, and we're kind of in a time when people get into um, like guru mode, like they think they know everything and they think they know what they should do and what everyone else should do. Um, I find that a little um, scary. Um, I'm not one of those people, I don't think I have all the answers. Um, I certainly have multiple perspectives um, and like I said in my last post that um, I definitely go the spectrum. I'm an extremist and I am very um, high, low, on, off. Um, there's not a lot of middle ground with me. Um, and most artists I know, um, and you know, this is kind of attributed to a, a bipolar um, characteristic, but I personally don't have that life experience. Um, I do get uh, anxiety and um, and severe depression, but I was born with that, so it's very uh, normal to me. And I know that most people are struggling with um, isolation um, at this point. Um, you know, and I, I've made my kind of opinion on that very clear. Like, if you're an adult, you have literally zero right to be bored. Um, if you're a kid, I, I completely understand your frustration. As an adult, by now, if you can't entertain yourself with uh, endless sources of creativity, social media, television, video games, making, I mean, reading, read a fucking book, you know? I feel like people are very um, dependent on um, constant social interaction, um, but with this resource of the internet, we can absolutely um, still stay in touch without being in contact. And I know that that's essential right now. I'm, I'm actually not a very paranoid person. Um, I'm just very realistic and, and very practical. Um, I don't believe in absolutes, but um, in the case of, um, you know, pollutants, the environment, um, viruses and things like that, I think they're very much real and they don't exist in our our minds necessarily. Um, if humans didn't exist, I still think that um, these would be realities for the animal kingdom. Um, we wouldn't be there to observe or, or to really speculate on that. Um, it's just a, a thought that I have. Um, and again, you know, I know that my thoughts are just my thoughts. They're not um, everybody's reality. And I don't um, suppose that they should be. And um, and that's why it's been really hard for me to um, completely share um, channeling on a regular basis. Um, currently, with my store and with trying to tattoo and build a clientele in a new state, um, and certainly a new city within that state, um, it's it's definitely been uh, a challenge for me. Um, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent. Um, the channeling is time consuming. It is um, energetically, it takes a lot of me to allow the process because it's not um, it's not me. It's not me and it's not my opinion. It's another essence in another reality um, 
that I've connected with my whole life and um, is very different than me and has a lot of different perceptions than I do. And I've tried to explain this a little um, in a previous video. Um, excuse my radiator while it makes insane noises. Um, one of the many defects of my store. Um, I, I really want to be sharing more channeling videos. Um, I really want to be making more channeling videos. Um, but what happens is there's a lot of conflict between my perception, and the perception of my guide. Um, and within my own life and my own, um, conflicts and struggles, uh, not having any income and working every day, which every artist can relate to that, um, if they're not getting paid for what they do and they're just making it in the hopes of making money on it someday. Um, and I know a lot of you out there that are on that path. Um, so you understand the struggle, the struggle is real as they say. Um, I, I simply don't have the time to channel, although, you know, I know that it's very beneficial to myself, more importantly, which is why I rarely share it, because it's a personal experience, and I'm not the kind of person who supposes that it's going to help everybody. Um, although it may resonate with, you know, one or two people, and guess what? Those are my people, and that's fine if it's just, you know, one in a million or, you know, one in every few hundred, few thousand, whatever. You get the point. Um, that it's just about, um, you know, helping. Um, it wouldn't happen if it wasn't helpful. It's never been detrimental to me. It's never been hurtful to me. It's never been negative. Um, if anything, I am the negativity. I am the one who is the naysayer. I'm the one who um, has a hard time believing and having faith in, you know, humanity, other people, um, and even myself sometimes. Um, so, um, I want this to be something that will shift the perspective of, um, of my own doubt. Um, but doubt is necessary, so is fear, so is anger, um, and they get a bad rap. They're kind of like lumped into the negative category, and they're not. They're just tools, um, and they're kind of a, an alarm system for us um, when we need um, a sense of uh, reflection. Um, uh, a one-track mind is dangerous, um, so please keep an open mind and one that can shift. I'm, I have been in the process of learning how to shift my perceptions. Um, for example, um, mainly for me that's in like romantic situations because I feel very, um, very kind of helpless and dysfunctional in that area so um, I think that my my perceptions and my patterns are um, protecting me basically and keeping me away from people in general um, as much as I would like to think that you know I can connect with somebody and that I can share the same or similar belief systems as another human romantically that would align and fulfill me and bring happiness to both people, but I've never been able to create that, um, nor has it ever been shown to me in any way so I think a lot of people out there who 
you know, are in families, their biggest crisis is just like dealing with their kids and, and, and not having a buffer in between them and their children. Um, but for single people, it's like, you know, okay, we're all going to die alone kind of, uh, fears and uh, frustrations. Um, and that actually does not make me want to seek out, <laughs> um, new connections with people. Um, but it has made me want to resolve past issues and issues with people that I felt the, the lack of understanding, um, was lingering, um, and a lot of residual pain and frustration for me personally. Um, so I guess what I mainly feel is just that what matters to me and, and what's keeping me, um, strong is just friends, friendship, um, and people who are, um, either always there or reaching out or just, I know that they, I know that they care. So, um, I would like to thank those friends and, um, and not get sad because I can't be sad right now. <laughs> That's one of the problems with, um, for me personally with channeling is that because I don't have an out of a, out of body, like <clears throat> a lot of really, um, prolific channelers, I'm still very much present. And although I don't speak or participate and I'm just listening, I emotionally respond to, um, what I hear my guide saying. So a lot of times I will interfere when I feel uncomfortable by the subject matter. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to, this is a really long introduction. That's the problem with channeling is sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's 20 minutes, sometimes it's five hours. And I really don't have the technology or the skill to understand, um, my devices that I can kind of, um, keep, keep all that video storage and information. Um, so I think what I'm going to basically be doing is just like, I, when I'm in that state, I can't interact and edit with my phone. So I basically just decide to come out of, um, the meditation and then, I'd have to start a new video basically. So I think what I'm going to try to do is do like more continuous footage and then upload it and then just delete it. So I have space in my camera and, um, if I end up doing this a little bit more seriously in the future, which obviously my guide has been telling me I'm going to do, even though I've been stopping it, I've basically just been prolonging this experience, but because of this virus, it's almost like a, a cosmic joke between us that, you know, now I have this time that I really don't have an excuse. So, um, I'm hoping that the videos will be helpful and informative. They're always physically transformative for me personally because I have such, um, chronic pain issues. Um, the time that I am meditating and allowing the interaction with my guide, my body is being, um, energetically worked on. Um, so physically my body actually improves in that state. Um, and it's helped me a lot get through my chronic pain issues. Um, and for people who have been dealing with this, um, them, themselves and they're looking to the medical profession to help them with this, it's, I hate to tell you, but it's not going to help you. Um, what you're needing is holistic medicine and, um, spiritual, um, healing and, and acceptance of self. And you're, you're basically like putting yourself into a ritual or routine that your body or your mind is 
objecting to. And so it's an alarm system for you to change your reality is what it is. Um, for me, that meant a lot of extreme decisions, um, removing people from my life who were making me sick. But in my mind, I didn't want to believe that they had the power to make me sick or that it was their fault so specifically so I couldn't kind of break away from them. Um, but when I actually did, at, you know, um, and finally got away from certain people and examined the, the patterns and the behavior, a lot, well, I would say more than 50% of my pain actually went away and I, I was able to manage the rest of it um, with physical therapy and um, self-massage, um, you know, meditation, yoga, um, diet, all that. Um, everybody has to find their own formula is really um, what it is. It's not as if one person has the answer for everybody. That's, that's what's hard about this, and that's why um, – so many people are untreated and they don't know what's wrong with them and they don't know how to fix it. Um, and, you know, I'm here to tell you without profiting <laughs> from your reality that um, what, you are look what you need is honesty in your life and you're being dishonest and you're lying to yourself and you're doing things out of obligation for people in your life and your body is your body's consciousness is separate um, from your waking consciousness and from your conscious state. Uh, so really, there's just a fighting within you of systems that want to override each other. Um, and your body is what's keeping you alive. So it's fighting harder to get your attention. Um, and that's that's the pain that's why you're feeling the pain um uh and that's been my experience it doesn't have to resonate with everybody maybe someone else had a mysterious disease that they finally found out they had and then they you know got the cure and they're good and they thank the medical profession i thank them for a lot of things that certainly hasn't been the case for me nor did anyone um help me or do anything other than offer me uh, drugs and painkillers, which I did not take. Um, uh, so those are kind of like the, the dominant issues in, in my personal reality, um, and they bleed into uh, my channeling from time to time, like emotionally when I'm triggered. Um, so a little warning there in case I, like, you know, start to cry or or it takes me longer to get a message across. Um, and um, that's that's it. I will be making a video here um, in a second. I'm feeling that happening. Okay.